You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And if our following theory is correct, those words will have never been so true. Together, let's thoroughly theorize and eloquently explain how the Avengers will be the villains of Phase 5. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has finished the first leg of the multiverse saga, and as we quickly approach the beginning of Phase 5, it is clear that the next faction of Earth's Mightiest Heroes are currently being established and will soon do what Avengers do and assemble. Now, we all know that along with new Avengers, naturally comes a new look as well, right? Now, maybe this means a new look members-wise, or new superpowers and suits, or my personal favorite, in a fancy new logo and updated Marvel Studios opening sequence. But beyond aesthetics, a new look could also imply how the Avengers are perceived by society and civilization in general. What if Earth's Mightiest Heroes weren't viewed by the world as mighty or heroic at all? Now, to begin explaining our theory properly, we unfortunately have to touch on a topic that's rather difficult and sad. But I assure you, we will be capped off with levity and celebration. Prestigious and exceptional actor William Hurt had portrayed General Thaddeus E. Thunderbolt Ross throughout the MCU up until this point. Due to his recent and untimely passing, Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios have made the tough but noble decision to recast and honor the late great thespian. Rest in peace, sir. So, who will be replacing Mr. Hurt, you ask? Well, just the little-known actor who starred in a few flicks here or there that you may have heard of before. Harrison Ford, anyone? Yes, Harrison Ford is our new Thunderbolt Ross in the MCU. And from subtle clues that we've gathered during Phase 4 and in the actions of characters like Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, good old General Ross has seemingly been rather active behind the scenes since we last saw him chronologically in Avengers Endgame. But before we dive deeper into what Ross has been doing and why Marvel chose to replace the character with such a legendary actor, we should do a quick refresher and catch up. For the few of us who are unaware, in both the comic books and the MCU, Thunderbolt Ross is the Red Hulk, Bruce Banner's greatest rival. In the books, General Ross would eventually become so incensed and obsessed with capturing Banner, believing the Hulk to be government property, that he would even undergo an experiment of his own, transforming himself into the Red Hulk. Jealous much? Well, actually, it was the leader and MODOK who transformed Ross into Red Hulk, which is quite interesting, as these are all characters confirmed to be returning or debuting in the MCU during Phase 5. In fact, Ross and the leader are both making their next MCU appearances during the fourth installment of the Captain America franchise, which is also the former Falcon Sam Wilson's first cinematic outing as Cap in Captain America New World Order. Man, New World Order. Y you probably think that sounds crazy, and might even have something to do with the Illuminati or Hulk Hogan, but I assure you it doesn't, and we'll come back to this later. With MODOK debuting alongside Kang the Conqueror during Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, you can bet your best pog that Ross will finally become the Red Hulk sooner rather than later. Oh, and uh, let's not forget to mention that it has also been known for a while now that the ragtag team of anti-heroes and anti-villains that Constantina Allegra de Fontaine has slowly but surely been assembling, aptly named the Thunderbolts, are getting a movie of their own at the tail end of Phase 5, who will of course be led by Thunderbolt Ross himself. So basically what this means is you can expect to see and hear a lot about Thaddeus Ross and Red Hulk throughout the course of Phase 5, as he will continue to play a pivotal role in the MCU moving forward. Now, up until this point, this has all probably left you wondering, what has Thunderbolt Ross been up to behind the scenes since we've last seen him? What will his role be in Captain America New World Order? Why is he important in any of this? And how does this in any way make the Avengers the villains of Phase 5? Well, allow me to elaborate further. Now, here is where the rumors and innuendo begin. It has been heavily theorized online and among many MCU fans that since the blip events took place, Thunderbolt Ross has ascended the ranks of the government and even become the actual President of the United States of America. Now, if this is true, this is where things get really interesting. See, Ross was one of the main figures who not only approved the Sokovia Accords back in the day, but he also strongly believed in their implications. As mentioned earlier, Ross feels as though the Hulk is government property, and has shown that he majorly feels the same about all super people and beings. 
He firmly believes that all of these heroes and villains running around should be registered and operate under the guise of the US government, or else be imprisoned and kept hidden from society. Typical jerk bad guy moves, am I right? Now, although the Sokovia Accords were eventually repealed, if Ross has indeed become the president, then that really doesn't matter, as a new bill and set of laws could be passed with ease at his discretion. On top of that, he could absolutely use his political constituents and influence over the media to demonize people with special abilities and specifically the Avengers, creating a false narrative that they are vigilantes and the real threats to America as well as the rest of the world. Hence the name of the movie that this is all allegedly set to happen in, Captain America New World Order. Using misinformation, it's possible that President Ross could galvanize the people who feel that supers are to blame for all the turmoil and destruction that's taken place over the last 15 or so years. You have to remember, in the MCU, when the Sokovia Accords were presented, people were split down the middle on this issue. Discussions and quips heard and spoken in passing by civilians would indicate that some of the population thinks supers are freaks and criminals, and even blame them for personal losses. Our very strength invites challenge. While others view them as symbols of hope and idolize them for their heroics. Even the Avengers themselves were torn over this issue, which ultimately led to the events of Civil War, where all of our favorite heroes fought each other. And it didn't really benefit anybody, as half the Avengers wound up imprisoned on the raft, while the other half wound up on the run from the government regardless. As seen during the She-Hulk Attorney at Law series that I'm sure you loved as much as everyone else, there are groups of people online who exist in the MCU, much like in real life, that scrutinize, shame, and just straight up hate supers. Even Jennifer Walters herself took a few tasteless shots at Tony Stark, and that man sacrificed his whole life to save the entirety of the universe. That's petty. That's very petty. There are special committees, rules, court hearings, laws, and prisons that have been developed specifically for supers, which is costing average taxpaying citizens their hard-earned money. Not to mention, some folks are just plain old sick and tired of constantly having their cities destroyed and their lives put at risk. And who could blame them? The people affected by the snap and both blips, the people affected by the reshaping of the world and immigration, the people scared of mutants as they begin to appear more and more, the Thanos was right extremists. Heck, the revelation that Namor and Talokan were a byproduct of the government's reaction to the aftermath of the Battle of Earth. Because of all these factors, and the fact that the supers or vigilantes narrative has been underlying and debated in the MCU since Phase 1, it would be easy for President Ross to cultivate and weaponize a large portion of society to influence others and turn the population against the Avengers. Plus, if the leader has any head or hand in this, and we all know he will, then something much more nefarious than even that is afoot. Not only could we see the Avengers versus the United States government, but we could see Earth's Mightiest Heroes squaring off against an entire global initiative put in place to take them all out for good. At some point, the new Avengers, that Sam Wilson will more than likely be in charge of putting together, will have to cross paths with the Thunderbolts as well. And perhaps it's the Thunderbolts who will be positioned and propagandized as heroic for working alongside President Ross and his regime. Therefore, much like Peter Parker had to endure for a brief while, the Avengers could spend the entirety of Phase 5 being viewed as the bad guys and villains of the MCU as President Ross takes action in an effort to usher in a new world order disguised as a concerted effort to protect the Earth. Or at least the Avengers will be viewed that way until Phase 6, after Kang's Dynasty and Secret Wars happen, where they will surely save the multiverse, demonstrating themselves as the world's true heroes once more, blah blah blah. But one question still remains, and that is, why? Why would General or President Ross go through all of this? Is it for power? Does he want to take over the world for himself? Is he really just that evil? I thought he sort of came around and supported the Avengers during the battle for Earth. Well, firstly, that was more like five or six questions, but who's counting? And secondly, that is simply just who Thunderbolt Ross is. I mean, think about it. As we mentioned earlier on in our video, Ross has always felt entitled over the Hulk. And when he moved up the ranks in the government and spearheaded the Sokovia Accords, he upgraded to feeling entitled over every and any superperson that could be pointed out or named. Imagine the damage that this kind of narcissist could do as what could be considered the highest level of power in the world, the President of the United States. This whole theory and motive fits perfectly with Ross's personality, ego, and history as it were. 
All of which leads me to pose one more question that I find myself stuck on as I record this video. Does Ross really even believe in any of this anti-vigilante, anti-superhero rhetoric? Or is he just jealous and projecting like sociopaths tend to do? I mean, think about it. He detests supers, and more specifically the Hulk, so much so that he is willing to transform himself into a Hulk. He believes in the Sokovia Accords so much and believes that the Avengers acting as vigilantes is so wrong that he taps Allegra de Fontaine to recruit and create his own off-the-books vigilante supergroup? If anything, Ross's grudge has always felt like a low-key infatuation or obsession on his part. It's almost as though that, for Ross, this is all about him being able to control what is uncontrollable. Now, with that being said, as a raging Red Hulk who can transform on a whim and is also the potential President of the United States, Ross will be in control of a lot, including the narrative that the Avengers are the villains of Phase 5. And that's our theory. Do you think we're on to something? What are some of your theories for Phase 5? Let us know in the comments section below, and be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications so you don't miss any conspiratorial comic content.